And here we are, 25 Matt. years of the Phantom Menace, and you didn't oh, expect what? us to do anything about it? You didn't expect us to do you, anything about it? Oh, you you're fools! Idiot. You're fools. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually you a good fools. laugh. That's a good laugh, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you very I much. I like that. No, yeah. um, I'm excited. We, we talked about this. We recorded a little... Uh, I guess you could say a little blurb before this where we watched The Phantom Menace, and those might come yes. out. They might not. They might stay in the catalog. We'll see. We don't know what we're going to do with those yet. Just know that we talked about a few things, and we're going to say something kind of similar here. There, There is a dying art of the DVD titles or the Blu-ray yes, titles. Is. Yes, and is. I'm, I'm kind of sad to see it go. And we were trying to figure out, you know, is there a relatable experience for people that have never had to do that before? Because when I, we were growing up, Jerry and I both had VHSs growing up. And then as we got a little bit older, yes. DVDs became more of a commercial thing. And on DVDs, they had these things called chapters. And with these chapters, it's you're able to like select books. scenes, much like books, much like books. You're able to select scenes from the movie. And The Phantom Menace has over 50 chapters. And I believe this is a directorial decision. Like this is a decision yeah. made at the highest level of what to title these things, of what happens in scene by scene. And mostly these are different scenes compiled together. And uh, yeah, it's weird. VHSs, you had, you know, a very consistent, you know, you just watch the full thing through. You could pause it or stop it, but there was no chapter titles. Streaming, same principle. Never thought we'd go back yes. to that format, but here we are. And chapter titles are going to be a thing of the past, which kind of devastates me. How do you feel about it? It's honestly, it, I remember that it was such a revolution after, like, again, I grew up with VHS. Uh, I begged my parents, like, I was always dragging my parents into the, like, after VHS, when I got old enough, yeah. DVD was when I was, like, I like I think junior high, almost high school or whatever. Yeah, like early and 2000s. I was, I was, yeah, I was in, like, junior high, high school. Uh -huh. And I have drug my parents into every like i have at least gotten for myself yeah and maybe not for the living room but for my bedroom a yeah. DV, like i got the dvd player I, you know i was like we gotta like dvds the next thing we gotta get this yep. we gotta start getting movies on this because this is what they're gonna be on yeah and then i dragged my parents into the blu-ray like i'll tell you right now my parents what they have under their tv is a dvd vcr <laughs> combo Yes, dude. Um, yes. I, I've drugged them kicking and screaming into the streaming generation as well. Mm -hmm. um, not kicking and screaming is honestly very placid and very just like, okay, I just don't understand See? what's going on. Uh, but, but to have, to have, to be able to go, well, oh, there's a menu and it's a really cool, like interactive designed like, someone on Twitter. I forget their name. Well, I'm going to have to look this up, uh, but they are making like, dvd menus yes they are for the sequel for trilogy the, for the sequel trilogy and they're very good like yeah. it, it would be like three different planets on each disc um and one would like whichever menu you got you didn't know what what planet menu you were gonna get each of menu was, there were three different menus and it was a different one each time you put the disc oh, and that was so, so cool. fun then so then everything was different everything was themed to that um, planet so you had um, say you had uh oh let's see like if you got hoth or something yes. right or no let's say let's say you got a uh, naboo on the phantom menace this was, you would go into the launching bay for the chat yes if i yes. remember correctly it was that or it was the the generator room and you would have the scenes display i think it was the generator room the feed generator room where the lightsaber battle apples ha happens not apples i don't know what that <laughs> word means um <laughs> you would have the scenes displayed on like the the energy beams and stuff yeah. like that, like music playing or like you or you would have them projected on like, you know, like different like little things in the cockpit of the Falcon. Well, then like every now just, and then it'd be, there'd be like a pit droid that walks by sometimes. Something, you know, like yeah. Some, so something weird. The characters would kind of like move around. There was like moving on a loop uh -huh. and stuff. It was it was yep. uh, it was it felt alive. It felt like this is the future. Right. And See, now the apparently the future is I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. I give can me pause it. I just want to give me my movie, dude. Give okay, me my on. movie. I don't want to. I don't. Who cares about this pit <laughs> droid walking around? Well, like, I remember... would stay up. I would stay up at it for hours on end at night in the summertime <laughs> watching my my Attack of the Clones DVD. 
like with like Django Fett flying like periodically. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and it was a, and they played the music and looped the music usually. Yes. My my earliest memories of DVD, and you're gonna love this because I'm sure you might have had one. The mm. PS2. The PS2. Oh, my yeah. God. Because it was the only one that I had in my room. And so like Revenge of the Sith would be on repeat. Attack of the Clones, uh, the oh, Phantom yeah. Men, they would all be on repeat because of this of this device where I could just, and the cool thing is, I believe it was R2, maybe it was R1. You can skip chapters by doing yes. that. So yeah. like, it was, it was like a part of the controller. And so when you would play this and you would, you would watch these DVDs, and I, it just felt like, and I, you'd actually hit the button and you would skip to that scene. Yeah. So it's so weird to think how gone that is because in my, as a kid, my dream would be, and it's so funny that we have it now, it would be to start a movie in the living room then go yeah. and finish it in the bedroom or they are or finish it another day later and have it save the same exact spot without having right. to turn the DVD on and off a DVD player. But it's so weird now is if I wanted to, it's so sad. If I wanted to start it on my phone, I can watch it on my phone while I poop and then go yeah. to the and living then go room. Go back in the living room and put it it's <laughs> right where you so left it. Weird. Yeah. It's, it's so, so weird. fucking weird. It is, and that's cool. That's convenience. And we as a species are going to die, but yeah. it's it's fine. But, 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 but that's cool. There's something special yeah. about we're getting the good China out tonight. Yeah, right? we are. We're going to, we're going to listen. I'm going to go <laughs> open up this case. I can't wait. Honestly, whenever like, and Ella, like Ella has, uh, my kiddo is, uh, she's seen most of the movies. Sure. But she's she's like, oh, God, it's okay. I can't wait for the day when she's like, Dad, I want to watch Star Wars with you. I'm going to go lovingly to my 4K Blu-ray collection Ooh. of of the complete saga, which is going to be irrelevant by that time. And she's going to, the, who knows how many damn versions will come out by then. I'm, I'm going to pull it out. There. That's such a nice, that like, I'm going to pull out. I remember out when you bought the, it. I remember mm, when you bought it. That stanky, stanky, bad, just like, <laughs> like, pull out case you know it's like mm, i feel like i'm doing something dirty breaking this yeah. apart man mm, that's right just spread these just spread spread these little cheeks i don't know why i'm getting so sexual yeah. it's but a sexual it, thing it's it a little is. bit it's it's, it, it's it's sensual it's very uh why do you think i like just, why do you think i like playing cartridge games no just, i've been see i've something. been looking from I've been looking for my goddamn Game Boy. I listened to an uh, a podcast oh. about Game Boy versus Game Gear the other day. Yeah. By the way. Oh, um, I would. I'll send it to you. Oh. I'll send it to you. I'll send Please. it to you. But uh, but but yeah, no. Uh, there's something about like that analog that just it, it feels timeless. Yeah, it way. does. So timeless. It feels a little. It feels and it feels a little more like honestly the like we're in the future. We can like you say you can watch the movie in the kitchen. You could go yep. take a shit. <laughs> wash your hands while watching it on your phone um, and then go watch it in the bedroom yep. while you fill up the tub, uh, get the toaster to throw it in there with yep. you, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it's, that feels strangely mundane now. Isn't that and awful? Everything. Isn't that awful? But there's something yeah. so much more engaging. It's like listening to a record. I always felt this well, way. Like, I th that's what I think. VHS yeah. is kind of doing that. Like, it's not like as big as vinyl. No. But VHS is kind of making a comeback. I feel yeah. like like there's yeah. there's a there's there's an underground of people like us who are just like I want to watch it. I want to watch. I want to take out that stanky D VHS. If if VHS is, could be in 4K, I would buy them. Mm. And I mean that. I, I, I honestly, I love. It. I want so I want my film in the highest resolution possible. And kids, I'm sorry, you're not going to get that unless you get an actual physical copy of a 4K Blu-ray. That's the best yeah, quality you'll ever get. Yep. I don't care what they say. The streaming yep. is not 4K. It's as nope. close to 4K as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. It's going to look. It's going to change your life when you see it on a 4K Blu-ray player. I Some agree. people can't tell. Some people can't no. tell the difference. But whatever. I'm um, telling you. The Phantom Menace is one of those ones that aged even better because of the 4K. Yeah. There's a couple of movies that have not aged well because of the 4K. I think Attack of the Clones looks pretty okay. But Phantom Menace, I don't know what they were doing when they made the Phantom Menace, but it was it was it's so it's, hyper real. It's incredible. People want to throw the entire prequel trilogy under the yep. oh, they were all green screen, blue screen, acting with tennis balls. Yeah. And that wasn't the case. Like you had like like Jar Jar Binks was physically on set. 
Yes. I'm with, I mean, I had Ahmed Best in the yep. uh, the headset Head and gear, stuff. Yeah. Me, but he had like a whole freaking bodysuit. He looked like Jar Jar Binks except for the he face. did. Yeah. And uh, you, like you had the most physical sets. You had the most min – isn't it the most miniatures? Yes, it's the, the most – it's, it's, it's more miniatures – in the Phantom Menace, than the entirety of the of the prequel, I'm sorry, the original trilogy, which yeah, is such a funny crazy. bit of data to me. Yeah, it's a wild like that, bit of the, data. The the Boonta Eve, like the the classic, the stadium with all the Q-tips and stuff, which is that's Q-tips, kids. It's just yeah, it's so much fan. fun. It's so much so fun, much fun, man. Just like there was just so much love and uh j just care poured into the phantom minutes see and i and i will talk because about george was still george was still in love with what he was doing he did okay he that's what i was gonna say off by us yet sorry what, yeah, I didn't mean to one thing i i want to get into before we actually di dissect this movie scene by scene chapter by chapter um, i think it was very important to acknowledge this is the first star wars movie that was completely backed just by george with distribution yeah. rights by fox so the funds were all coming from george's pocket and the best thing about this is that no fans at, at this point in the story had intervened in the turn in terms of like, you know, having like after Phantom Menace, you can see there was edits. You can see that Jar Jar took a yeah. took a back seat. This is and I and I've talked about it and even I've had people yeah, like listen, Hello Greedo. Listen, Hello Greedo is quoted me on this. Just like Star Wars fans to put a to put a, a strong black man in the back seat. Of exactly. The yeah, exactly. Yeah. As, as Hello Greedo has said. On, on one of his videos, that is something I said. It is the most pure Star Wars movie. It's pure. Yeah. It's pure. Yeah. And it's 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 Rick saying yes to everything George wants. And then George realizing he might have gone Damn. too far in a few places. You know what I mean? It, There's it wasn't Rick saying yes, it was Rick saying, fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, you and you yeah, dude. If you listen to you and oh, it's fucking great, you and it's, it's, it's great. great. No, I just it's great. I I watched this movie. With so much heart, because and we've talked about it before, it's our first Star Wars movie that we saw in theaters yes. that was new, and and I was a little boy, I was like five years old seeing this, and you were a little bit older than me, so it's like, 12. yeah, yeah, so like there is something so interesting there in terms of how it hit both of us at the exact time in the exact heart, and and you know we are seeing a very much a not revisionist history, but you're seeing people now come out and how re watching these movies with a greater sense of joy and understanding of what they are, you know, and what they refer to right. and what they're representing. And that makes me happy that the prequels have this opportunity to grow and glow. It's, it's very interesting. Grow and and I like it growing glow. That's right. I just, I just, so I, I don't know, 25 years, man, that that's unbelievable. We were at the 20th panel, not together. Yeah, but we were at the 20th. Well, panel we were, so we were, but we were uh -huh. on opposite corners. Sides. And they're like, you I have a Scott picture Gibby. of a very tiny. We had just met at this convention yes. and we were like, yes. well, like instant friends, uh -huh. like uh, just a tiny Scotty and Katie, like over there, yep. like waving, like mad yep. at me. It was great. Yep. It was great. Oh, so, good. so much fun. But yeah, just to be, it's crazy that that was five years ago five when we were sitting ago. in that, that stadium singing, uh, the beginning the saga begins yes uh, weird with weird al with all these strangers and it felt a long, long time ago. it felt oddly uh powerful it's yeah. a weird out it's a weird al yankovic song about the phantom menace but, but it felt powerful it. in that moment like that 20th everyone's anniversary of the phantom menace and everyone's singing <sighs> this story about this movie about the beginning of the story that we love so much oh it's just something something special something well so the title the title of the movie originally was the beginning and, and, you know, and, and honestly, I don't mean to boast or brag. I, I guess I must have to get everything out now, but Just like get it. you're going to have uh, to do it now. The, it's the, one of the few movies that have made me do um, hours of research. It's it truly is that movie. Yeah. I can't think of another Star Wars movie where like, I just love reading about it. Cause it's, well, just say, it's Scotty, Scotty has a library of books about just Phantom Menace, prequel about books. ideas uh, ideas of the phantom menace of things as well great book yeah. must buy uh, it, a solid 40 bucks but it's and i'm sorry star wars archives it cheaper than that i think it was 25 it's yes but really? it's it's the prequel archives and like i was literally on the i was reading on my flight uh to dc and it's just it's so comprehensive it's such, and it's you know this is actually where i left off the jar jar page and then look my other my other favorite Beautiful. is 
this is the illustrated script before it was edited. So there right. are there are images in here that obviously did not really make the movie. Um, and if it did, it was a deleted scene. So you've got the illustrated script. It's fantastic. There's some different nuances in there that you probably wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't read it yet. Um, and then, of course, the behind the scenes book of the family. I mean, it's I, right. and of course the visual dictionary and everything. And I just, I guess, I love this movie. There's something yeah. so interesting about this movie. It's pulpy. It's it's vibrant. It I don't know. It doesn't hold back. It just it it, it does not pull its punches. It's so unapologetically George. Yes. And and so many people give him so much shit for being unapologetically himself. Yes. Um, but you know it's and it's why George. I mean George has always been dry, according to uh, you know like people who like hung out with George his whole life and everything like that. But like to the, the George, like at the, the opening of, uh, was it the, the opening of galaxy's edge where he's like, it's pretty good. Kind yeah. of a thing like that. Like, yeah. I think that George was born during the prequel yes. uh, era. Yes. The, the, by the end of Revenge of the Sith, you could tell he was a little burnt out. Another, another example yeah. right here. The actual full script right here, the facsim fac facsimile, facsimile, the facsimile of the complete, of the complete script. script, and it's yeah. and it's photos and pictures, Reading, the kids, script. and then of course the the classic, and it's just like this movie has so much. I get that one over here somewhere. I think yeah. There's one thing in here that that was cut. That's a picture of a canary, and it's like a canary in the coal mine scenario where they would have had a canary in the smoke room, um, in the room that filled with smoke. It's just such a oh, weird. Oh, yeah. The bird, yeah. the bird, yeah. like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's just this movie. And it's so funny. We've talked about this and we've, we've heard from interviews with Ahmed Best and other creators. There's like six hours of this movie somewhere out there. And that's, that's nuts. That's Release the bomb bad nuts. cut. Release Are you kidding me? Yeah. Jerry, I, I wouldn't, I, I would probably give up just making money for the rest of my life if I could have. The long cut of the Phantom Menace and the raw footage from the beginning documentary. I'm serious. I just, God bless. I love this movie. Hey, you heard it here first, folks. It's Scotty oh. students. Get on it if you. If yeah, you wanna, get on it. Research yeah, it. Yeah. I want to. I want like North Korea to leak it. You know what I mean? Like I want like the Lazarus <laughs> Group from North Korea. You know where they destroyed Sony in like yeah. 2014? I want them to do that to Lucasfilm and just leak. The, the, the Nintendo had a really big leak in 2020. I want that to happen so I can get my yeah. damn six-hour cut of the Phantom Menace. Please, yeah. also, God. Also, uh, we, we want that to happen. We also don't want that to happen, Lucasfilm, because we enjoy our partnership with you. Yes, it, yes we you do. Know, you know, because we are paid chills. Yes, we are paid chills. But now, I guess we should get into it. I guess we should get into the... Let's um, do it. The, so the, the so each chapter, just so y'all know, I might have said this in the other episode. I already said it already. The first five chapters are this. Number one, opening logos. Two, the Phantom Menace, which is obviously the, the titles. Obviously, yeah. The three, short negotiations. Four, Queen Amidala. And five, landing on Nebu. Uh, I did this for the for the for the video. Can I display my skill again? Is that possible? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. This is a complete. I'm not reading a thing. Nothing is in front of me. I wish I could prove that. Um, okay, you see my background. You want to put it? You want to put it? Uh, what is it up there? What do you want? Do you want to put the the? the no, I'll just do it. On the, I'll just read it. Okay. I'll just I'll just pull up for those of you because again, this is side technically side. an audio medium. Technically an audio medium. Scotty is not looking at anything. We don't have the movie pulled up or anything. Uh, Scotty is going to close his eyes. Yes. And recite. Uh, this is literally. Uh, this is not a joke. I will use my TPM Letterman there jacket that I bought from Silver from Star Wars Thrifting to recite the entire yes. opening line. And there's nothing in here. This I was going to say, it. let's see that lining. Let's see that lining. See okay, that lining. We're good. we're good. Here we go. I'm covering my That's face. Nice I'm covering okay. my face. Uh, his go. face is covered. I'm going to back like out. The guy, like, the guy like describing the crashing of the Hindenburg. The, Hindenburg. the tragedy. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Here we his go. head's under a jacket. You ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Turmoil has engulfed the Galactic Republic. The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems is in dispute. Hoping to, resolve, hoping to resolve the matter with a blockade of deadly battleships, 
The Greedy Trade Federation has stopped all shipping to the small planet of Naboo, while the Congress of the Republic endlessly debates this alarming chain of events. The Supreme yes. Chancellor has secretly dispatched two Jedi Knights, the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy, to resolve the conflict. That's it. Yes! That's the full opening crawl. He's Memorize. Done He's Memorize. done it. It's He's just it. so good. It's, it's just so good. good. It starts the whole good. saga. It's, it kicks it off. You can see that there's already – there's turmoil. There's problems going on. Yeah. It's not as – and it's not as to me. It's not as a new hope of like you kick into it. The movie just starts. This movie has a slight ramp up. You know, yeah. The Force Awakens just starts. Revenge of the Sith just starts. Attack of the Clones slight ramp up. I love that when they have these little bit of a great example. Empire Strikes Back is like the the, the longest ramp up. There's no action yeah. oh, yeah. for a while, except it's for the one. It's it's all yeah. It's all story. Yeah. Yep. Return of the Jedi slight ramp up. Not much action. Um, actually, yes. the probably the longest act. That is probably the longest. TLJ action from the very beginning for the opening shot. Tross action. So this is the first one that's like, we're gonna ease you into this one. You know, we're gonna give you the right. the lay of the land in terms of what's going on politically, and then we are going to explore these characters that we're going to introduce. And of course, that that cruiser, the Republic cruiser. Dun 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 dun. dun. Oh, yeah. God bless. Oh, just the the way they're kind of they're trying to a little evoke a little bit, a little bit of the Tanta V4. Huh? A little bit is it's red. is a little. Yeah, it's just a little. It's like it's like, oh, it's red. It's got a different uh, front. It doesn't have that yeah. hammerhead. And it only has three engines instead of like however many the Tanta V4 has. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. But you still have that whole like, OK, we're going to go here. And then you see all the blockade <sighs> and everything, which is just kind of a sight. Uh -huh. Right. Like all those like and different battleships and everything. It is. Yeah. Covering. Oh, it's very immediately. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. This is, I don't see any starters. You, there's, there's no, it's familiar in that it, it is still, most people are like, oh man, the Phantom Menace. It's like, it doesn't look like Star Wars. It doesn't have the lived in feel like, no, the, the opening has those lived in ships. Oh my God. This people don't read. Okay. Hold on. I was reading my archive book and Doug Chang specifically said the reason why this has a sphere in the middle. It's because it's supposed to evoke the Death Star. You're instantly yeah. supposed to realize, okay, it's going to go from being this little tiny thing to being something much bigger. And of course, in Attack of the Clones, we learn that that thing does like detach and float yeah, up goes... into the ring. So like yeah. there's the a visual, if you look at the language, it is evolved. You know what I mean? It evolved right. from this to the Death Star that we have now. So like, and then of course, Star Killer. And you can see this, right. this one was honestly... Because you got to think, this is taking place uh, how many years? 23 years before the original trilogy? No, no, before Revenge. No, this is taking place. I'm sorry. It's almost 40 years, but, isn't it? Before the original trilogy. Yes, I think just about. I think you're right. So I think so. Look at the difference between cars now and cars 40 years ago in the 80s. All 80s cars were blocky, right? And they were all right. kind of funky looking. Whereas cars now are all very sleek. If you look at 83 to 19 to 2023, there's a huge difference of what vehicles yeah. look like and how they function. Well, like even go back from 83 to 53, you know? Oh my God. Yeah. And like that's yeah. the bigger thing because like the, the, the ships in the original trilogy are like eighties industrial car, are more yes. like eighties cars. 80s cars. And you go back to the Phantom Menace and it's got like, you get like the sleek sedan. Yes. And stuff, yes. Right? That's um, right. It has a more of, and I know George specifically said this needs to look more Art Nouveau in the sense of like you know like the Empire State Building, how that building yeah. looks, or how 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 yeah, designs look. Yeah, very yeah, very smooth. Yeah. Like all the all the 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 locomotives back then, you know, the big ones, the big famous ones, were all very smooth designs. And you know, look at the N one Starfighter, which we which we see later, which we'll get to. But right. like you've got obviously a Republic ship and, and very cool. You know, this toy right here is a great symbol of it, but you see, you see the ship actually entering in, you know, just like that. Yeah. So oh, it's like, cool. yeah. yeah, it's, it's a micro machine, but like you, it, God bless. I love micro machines, but like you, this is a, I had this toy growing up. This is just the most idealized version of, you know, a universe that we actually have not, we haven't returned back to this aesthetic in star Wars yet. I can't wait till we Not do. Really. Not really, we, you know. We've had little nods, like you know, yes. like uh, Cobb Vance bike, 
yes in the Marshall, yes being oh. like a pod racer engine have uh-huh. we gotten the confirmation is that anakin's pod I racer think it engine? must be i think it must be it has to be yeah man what up gary stew that guy he's got <laughs> anakin's pod racer engine he's got but also hold on anyway. i have it right here the other the other version of what we're referring to you know the the n1 has made its comeback in terms yeah. of design and when dude at Listen, celebration, I got to talk to Doug Chang for two seconds because I saw him at the end of the panel, and I said, "I said, dude, I said, so nice to meet you. I'm so happy y'all brought the N1 back." And he goes, "Oh, it's one of my favorite designs. Thank you so much." That was the one thing I wanted to say yeah. to that man is that they brought this design back. God, it's it's so good. Also, I my my it's perfect. My one thing is. I love that. I love that Grogu is uh, riding on the wing. There is he. Yes. Is he like riding? The, yeah. My one thing with the N one mm-hmm. is for in Mando. I just want a little more yellow. Just give me a, a little, little more bit. yellow. Just a little bit. Just a dash a more yellow. Bit. I get it. I get. Din I get doesn't it. like to have. I get it. Yep. That's his. That's his aesthetic. Anyway, oh. it's fine. Come on, Din. I just anyway, so. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You. I was going to lead into the next, the next portion. Well, of I was going to say, let's go back to the Phantom Menace. Listen, this is okay. how good we are at podcasting, everyone. We're just this. Honestly, it's so funny. We'll talk about the OT at some point. We'll talk about all of them. We all we've always had. We did the Bombad build up years ago. But like, yeah, the Phantom Menace is honest to God our shit. I mean, it's like it's it's exactly our shit. Yeah. what we want. And, and I don't know to to get back into it. The the fact that. You can tell it's all practical models. And Grant Imahara from yeah. Mythbusters worked directly on this. So, like, you see him in some of the BTS photos, mm-hmm. like, painting it and putting lights inside of it. And the fact that they what they would do is they would take them, they would shoot them, and then put them in a digital space. It's very forward-thinking. It's not like it is now, you know? George had this oh, idea yeah. that he, he would film on miniature sets and then put people in. And that's all the pod race hangar bay is. Remember, he he yeah. literally he filmed a giant miniature, like a twenty five foot long miniature with huge props, and just put them into it, and it looks pretty good. You it, know, it's seamless. Yeah, um, I never knew for the. It was un, it was honestly it was it was just several years ago when yeah. I found out. Yeah, uh, I think it was Light of Magic. So maybe I don't. It remember. might have been. Yeah, I don't know. One of these so books like, has it. It, like just to like you, yeah, you never really got a picture of how how much miniature was done until like mm. yeah, it was like a couple years before I went to celebration. I remember yeah, just like seeing some things about like wow, I didn't know it was like that that <laughs> um, detailed, was that much practical. Yeah, because um, that was the middle of the fandom war of uh, oh the the prequels suck because X Y Z. But I don't know, I mean, like so y- you've got all this. It, it feels so alien yet so familiar and you get more alien when you've got the reveal of our new stormtroopers, the dangle, uh-huh. weeds. the dangle, uh, weeds. The yes, dangle Jerry. weed. We got our, dangle. our, uh, our lovely little dangle weed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Our, uh, our battle droids are B ones uh, um, and the, 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 I guess, what are they called? They're not hyena bombers. They're the, they're just droid fighters. Yes. I forget yes. If there's like a name for Vulture like droids. droids? Vulture droids. Yeah, that's that's right. the one that um, didn't. Honestly, I never learned that name until uh, Revenge of the Sith. Same, same. I did not that's, know that was that's the name. Whatever, of the yeah. But the, it, it's something to say about design. You know, we've always got stormtroopers, which look like skeletons. These look like the skeletal structure. Like these look like skeletons. Where stormtroopers yeah. resembled skeletons, these look like skeletons. And George designed them so he could kill them very quickly and chop them like and slice them like butter. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure he says that. Yeah, chop them yeah. like a piece of butter. We're supposed to make light work, real quick work of these. Yeah, and that's the thing yeah. though. Steven Spielberg broke one's arm off by just touching yeah. it. I mean, old dangleweed here. Yeah, dangleweed. <laughs> he tries to put the hand back on upside down. It was so great. Uh-huh. Oh so man, great. I love that. Anyway, God bless. But yeah, to have like something so um, like here's our threat, uh, and it's it's still it just people like it's people were not ready, nope. for what this was. People wanted the the kind of continuation like we got in uh, what if it, like the the sequel trilogy a little bit yes. where it's like oh it's just another empire, which you and I have been vocal are is kind of the only drag for those movies for me is the fact that it's just a rehash. I was ready i I remember being like okay we're doing these guys again we're doing and i was like okay apple store stormtroopers kind of cool 
All yeah. right. Yeah. I'm, I'm down. I'm done. It's the first order. I'm into uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. And I, I love it. You guys know, like, like last Jedi is like one of, it's like my favorite film of, of course. the series right now and all that. Like we love those films, but to go to, to have something that was so fresh, we haven't, you've said that we said it a million times. We haven't had anything like that yet. No, we haven't. since it's been since a while. the prequel trilogy, like a new threat that's it's like so different. The new threat that is still the same threat that's in the mm-hmm. other one, like you know, you have like Palpatine pulling the strings for that. But, but it's also uh, it's it's an odd it's a it's a uh, it's always quantity over quality, and the, the battle yeah. droids symbolize that. You've got you know mechanized army that is going to not be as good as a person army, and that's what right. the clones are designed for, and. Of course, they phase each other out inevitably. But in terms of when you digest this entire story, the battle droids are perfect because you can just threat by numbers. They can take over planets yeah. because it's of the zombie numbers. Rules. Strictly. It's zombie yes. rules. It's because yes. like you could take like out a couple zombies, like no problem. But yeah. then you have like an entire like horde of these Elite. things. And I mean, yeah. it, listen, I just started replaying the the Phantom Menace PS1 game. Yeah. That just came out on PlayStation. Oh. And it is so frustrating how many times you get killed because you have to find physical health. Yep. In that game. It doesn't yep. recharge like old, nope. like new games. <laughs> and um, it is so frustrating because then you also there's no auto save. You have no. to save your Start own over again. Goddamn uh-huh. game. Uh-huh. Uh, anyway, epitome of the 90s. And like so they I, can't overwhelm with force is what I'm trying to say with all that. Exactly. And and we obviously see the full scene play out. One of my favorite quotes from the scene, which Jerry and I were citing earlier, was the be mindful living force. And that that to mm. me is just the first introduction of what George talks about. The whole theme of the movie is symbiosis. How can these two right. groups of people be at odds if something is coming against them? It's going to threaten the whole planet. And of course, we see at the end of the movie they join together. Things are fixed. The force is balanced some some way. But in terms of what we see, you know, straightforward on on the scene, you see these two Jedi Knights, and we've always been promised this grand, you know, era of of Star Wars. And and it, honest to God, we've talked about this for hours before it lives up to the hype it just does yeah. oh yeah and it the music is fresh everything is fresh and you know you get up the protocol droid that's not 3po it, it's kind of weird you're like oh this one's a this one's a lady droid and, and it talks yeah. you know very Ooh, a lady <laughs> the lady droid a lady droid my lady as the only one tips his fedora <laughs> no i uh, i just love how this whole movie kicks into gear the nemoidians are fantastic enemies we know we know this little not not that anyone is a surprise. Nemoidians are making a comeback in the Acolyte, so oh, we're finally getting oh, some more Nemoidian action. Friggin' nut, man! Oh, Here we go. Man. I can't so wait. So excited, so excited, and you get these paranoid characters who are obviously being played, you know, by a puppet master, which is you know, which we now yeah. know as Palpatine. And in that moment, you're it sets up the whole saga. You already set up the conflict. We'll see later. This guy is still the enemy by the ninth movie. You know what I mean? And it, it just right. works. He appears in every and almost every story uh, in some capacity. And you see him already pulling the, the strings and it, it just works on a fundamental level. It, it's Star Wars. It is the Star Wars. It's the beginning. It's the Phantom right. Menace. Like the title alone just works so well. The Phantom Menace. It's just there. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Jerry, can you for a moment gush about your favorite scene? Probably from the whole okay. movie. So listen. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we, we've gushed about it before, but like the uh, the whole sequence where the dioxys is being pumped into the room, the room fills with gas. You have Newt Gunray say they must be dead by now. Yeah. Destroy what's left of them. And then uh, just the that whole and we were talking about it on our uh, little watch along that uh-huh. we you've you've probably watched by the time you're listening to this. Yeah. And to have like the doors open, it's just smoke, it's fog, it's gas, it's what you know. The the smoke is there. The uh, TC14 a protocol droid comes out oh, like, "Oh, my. excuse me." Excuse and just me. the the rock star reveal. Oh. Where it's like again, like it's again, we were talking, it's like a rock show. It's like a rock concert. Yes, it's like where yes. like the smoke rises and then the reveal and oh. stuff, the crowd goes wild. Well, and that's they right. come out hacking and slashing, man. Just the whole like 
the, the thing I love about that scene is that that was like the first time that we had heard all the sh- like you you watched Luke in the old movies be mm-hmm. a Jedi, but you hear all these stories of the Jedi in their prime and like mm-hmm. what the Jedi used to be. And this is the first time you see these Jedi in the prime, like see why they were so feared by those who would do evil and revered by those who by those who needed help and, and who yeah. did good. And just to have, I don't know, just like, man, just the everything about that scene, man, the way the droids just go, was it like, a, was it, check it out, Corporal, we'll cover you, oh, blast them. Yeah, and then just like, they all start blasting. They take a few God. out before they even jump out of the, the friggin' fog. Yep. And then it falls to the wall from there on out. Just but it also, it's the, the idea oh, man. of it, chaos ensuing, right? And these yeah. people have never, these well, these Nemordians have never encountered Jedi before. They don't know. Right. And it's so pure. Well, you've got, what's so great is you've got the one who comes in and is like, like after, after uh, Palpatine's like, oh, this guy's a bitch, bring in someone <laughs> else. <laughs> From uh, like you, you get Rune Hakio, our boy, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, who gets a very deep voice in the second one, which is great. Yes. But so we're not strange. there yet. No, <laughs> uh, but no, just like I love that he's the one guy. He's like, oh, you've never encountered Jedi before. Oh, we are fucked. <laughs> yes, but it's true though. They like New Gunray is, or I'm sorry, Viceroy is so clueless when it comes to it. And you know, this movie also does some things which we'll, which we'll get into now. Politics. This is a very political movie. Yes, I think our friend uh, Peter Townley said it best when he came on and we talked about the Phantom of Peter Townley. He yes. talked about it'd be as if Amazon were to stop people from going into a state. That's exactly what it would be like. It's this is exactly a shipping what it company. Is. A shipping company it's is so interesting you from leaving or coming from a state and you're stuck there and, and people are starving. You see, uh, and then they invade and then the Amazon employees yeah. come and take they have city. robots. They have robots. <laughs> they have Amazon delivery drones, like attacking and, people. Yes. Yeah. They take over your your place of living and they, you know, they're like destroying your art and doing stuff like that. It's so bizarre. It's so George. Weird. It's so freaking weird. It honestly, it's it's a little prophetic. Like we're not very far yeah. away from like uh, oh. Amazon having a Senate seat. <laughs> yes, seriously. It's it's the idea that yeah, capitalism it's, it's and consumerism can outweigh political you know, political, I guess, yeah. desires and How, needs. It's like, listen, like the, the greed of man. What is it? Oh, man, there was a something I was watching recently um, that was so good. Was I'm trying to think of the, the exact phrasing. Uh, it, something about uh, greed. Greed always uh, wins over yes. the over the week. Yeah, always. Greed always wins over the week. We got to think too. I get exactly and, what that's from, but it's, it's anyway, shout out to whatever I was watching. <laughs> that was, it was solid. No, I, you got to think too. This is something that, you know, I don't want to get into a political debate. It's just not, it's not the right time or place to do it. But our most recent president uh, was like a reality TV star who was a, who was a venture capitalist. So like you're, you now, 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 this is right. real <laughs> shit. I mean, this is this, what happens yeah. to the Phantom Menace is not far off from happening. I'm sure it's happening Listen. in countries that are smaller. You know, yeah, just well, I mean, it was supposed to like a lot of uh, the Phantom Menace, especially I mean, especially uh, Revenge of the Sith, because like yes. we started in 1999 and like mm-hmm. the war on terror didn't start full on until like 2001, 2002. One, yeah, yeah. Right. And so by the time Attack of the Clones came out, that's like George really starting to riff really? on. Well, I mean, like we knew Gunray was Newt Gingrich. Yes, literally. Like that's literally, literally like George is not very imaginative. He's he's no. very imaginative, and, and he's also not. It's also straightforward. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very like oh, very straight- Newt Gunray. He's actually Newt Gingrich. N G literally Newt. Yeah, Both I mean it's right there. Hurt. It's right there. <laughs> but he doesn't even try to hide it. He's no. nasty like that. But no. Yeah. Um, that's the thing, like kids. I'm sorry, you're poor. Like, it's this. It is. Is it escapist? It, does it help you feel better? Does it help me? Like, like, does it calm me down? Does it like yeah. give me nice, fuzzy, warm feelings? Absolutely. Yes, of course. But does it have something to say that because George is a, a a hippie who wanted to race cars, yeah, and then wants his films to actually say something that means something to the younger generation, like don't fall for the same mistakes. Dude, that your parents, well that your grandparents, your parents' parents, all of them mm-hmm. have fallen for, be better. Yeah. That is why 
there needs to be politics in Star Wars. Yes, and, and in particular, when you watch this movie, it's very straightforward, whereas we, we said this earlier in one of our recordings, that it was so much more subtextual in the original trilogy. It was, you right. know, the one scene we really get that's political is the scene where you see the Imperial Senate, oh, I'm sorry, the Imperials talking about how the Senate has been disbanded in A New Hope. Yeah. And that's it. And like you don't really get much after a million Gen Xers cried out in ecstasy during that. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. This, however, is like the whole problem is there's a blockade and there's people trying to get in and invade, and they're worried about an invasion because they have a battle droid army, a hardened droid army. They have a, 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 a actual battalion that they could send if they wanted to. And of course, you know, if you want to get your way in the political sphere, you might have to do something drastic and invade a country to do that. And this right. happens all the time. Russia, Ukraine. You know, like that's a great example. Yeah, it's listen, there's tons of it happening right now in our yeah. very in our very real world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's not so much espionage. It can be more straightforward. You know, we've got shows like Andor and we've got movies like Rogue One, which are more espionage films, which are a little bit more subdued, more like a spy thriller. Right. But it's kind of nice to see a full on. This is how some things go. And, and they're going to yeah. go this way. And the problem is. And just like some American politics or even some world politics, you got a 14 year old in charge. You're putting a, a child in charge of a place because of the bureaucracy of this, yeah. of this, of this city. They're not cut out for an invasion. They've got a child leading the nation, a child right. with no experience in that, in that kind of worldly duties. So there's something right. to be said about that. It shows the hypocrisy of some, you know, Senate state or some like think think about um, before obviously now it's no longer the same but the kings and queens of England some of them were becoming kings and queens as kids and they were yeah. in charge of shit you know they right. had delegates they had to go through but it's not the same yeah. you know well and honestly uh, with the political landscape here in America like we'd almost prefer the fourteen year olds yes. over like was- some of the the the. <laughs> <laughs> the geriatrics that we have in there right now. Oh my God. But, it, uh, it, it, it's, it's insane. It's insanely uh, crazy to think about uh, just someone who would, again, is, is still a child uh, having such power and everything, but at the same time being such a strong character, being yep. so brilliant, being so wise beyond her years and everything it just and like, she she was fighting for her people that's the that's the yes. beauty of that whereas the other people are worried about what is this going to happen in terms of the senate that she is yeah. only worried about the people of her planet and it shows the humanity yeah, of a like, child this is who i was elected well it's, it's yeah yes. she was the uh the empathy the empathy yes. of a child of someone younger you have the idealism it, you know it can always some people like to focus on the bad of like yep youth, right? But at the same time, you have on the same side of the coin, the coin you have, or on the opposite side of the coin, excuse me, mm-hmm. you have this unfettered optimism that has not yet been like crushed, crushed. by the world. Yep. Yeah. And and just like no, we are going to do this. We, if yep. you have a strong enough like youthful person, they're going to make some change. Greta Thunberg, uh, like yep. uh, just like all these different like I mean, you, tons of people. Uh, who are younger, you can still make a difference, kids. Of That's course. what Star Wars is trying to tell you. Star Wars is trying to tell you that you can always make a difference. And you know what's funny? I mean, obviously, this is paralleling Leia. That's the whole intention of this. That's Leia's mom. Exactly. You know, and it's supposed to parallel how she is as a character. And then, of course, with you know the introduction of Anakin later, it's paralleling Luke. It's just it's it's all very intentional, it's all very thematic. And I think this is the the benefit of the Phantom Menace is that it does really, really benefit from the use of theme and like how many themes right. you can tie back and forth between the, across the entire saga and other mythologies. And uh, yeah, so this leads us to our final little scene now, uh, which we get to experience. And it's probably one of the coolest invasions scenes ever. The music is phenomenal. When we talked to Mac to Marco oh, yeah. all those years ago, the first thing I brought up was the theme and music of the Phantom Menace. Cause we talked about how great this intro music is it's their it's their version of the yeah. imperial march you know dun, 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 you get like the bomb but like it's like a lot of like war drums coming in yeah lo- you guys are loving this acapella version <laughs> but you, you you're, yeah don't lie you're doing it right now in your car or oh, at work or in class or stuff. You're, you're doing it in the library right Jamming. now i can see you i can, you can see hear you. it i know you're doing it <sighs> i see you and the, sh- and see the you. design of the ship just going down and landing and you know, it, it feels like a full on a full and we haven't seen 
that's one thing we hadn't seen at that point. We hadn't seen a ship transition as neatly, you know, from space into upper atmosphere and then land. And then yeah. you see the full transition of that whole entire moment of when it's at lands, it's so kinetic. There's so much movement, you know, yeah, and it's like so as, well as done. One of them's landing. There's other the ones cuts. that have landed. There's the uh, steps going by uh, the two uh, droids on steps, which the are the, coming like, out. yeah, those, those are the segways, the little segway speeder bikes. They drive, uh, but it if, feels so fan splain. It feels so mechanized. It's so cool. The Empire, yeah. it felt if the Empire felt more like you had to control them, whereas this, it's them controlling themselves. They're they're they are yeah. doing the autonomy of it. And I love that you can already tell the ranks of each one, whereas the regular battle droids are more plain or they have the red insignia. And then the commander right. instantly, since the opening scene, visually establishes that yellow is the command droids, you know, insignia. Yeah. Later you see that in the battle. Will. Yep. Right, the yellow part of the the back of the head, and I don't know. I love that the Jedi snuck aboard this ship, and this uh, actually is where we can, you know, wrap up right here. We well, we will get into the rest of this as well, soon as we go through. I was gonna say we got we we also have one faithful meeting oh, yes. of one lovely uh, Gungan who is uh, yeah. right right here. <laughs> <laughs> underneath me if you're watching if, if you're, you're watching. not we, like see our logo look for the logo. look at the logo look at our them. logo look at the guy in between us one of our favorite guys um Ever. one of our the best glup shit he's not a glup shit oh he invented no. glup shit oh he invented glup uh, no uh you have qui-gun jinn again to us the most jedi jedi to every jedi yep uh, running head first into Save. one jar jar jeremiah binks i don't know why i i, I feel like he needs a middle jar, name in there jar jeremiah no it's funny too the uh, the next five ones we're going to cover the the title of the of the sixth uh, chapter is jar jar binks and and you know george had to go and name these and give these title yeah and so to look forward to a few things here's our next five chapters we're going to cover uh probably in the next few weeks jar jar binks six seven oda gunga Eight boss nass, nine the planet core, and then ten invasion of feed. So I I love that we can talk about this stuff, Jerry. Every oh, time I, I this damn movie here, is so awesome. Shit, man. We can talk you as you if you have listened and or watched the us for very long, you know. God. That we are uh, sorry, we're getting some very interesting group texts. Uh, are we? You know, you know uh, that we love the Phantom Menace, and yes. uh, guys, thank you so much for for hanging out with us in this, for watching the other uh, the other videos and stuff like that. Um, we'll have some more live streams coming up for you pretty yes, soon. Yes, of course, of uh, course. By the time this show, I think uh, by the time this one drops, we'll have uh, we'll be doing I think a tier a bomb stream bad, a bomb this Thursday. Bad court, baby. Bombad Court about, returns about, about pod racers and pod racer pilots from the oh, video games. Right. Yeah. We're gonna listen. We're gonna work on our. We're gonna work on our uh, our deck oh. growls. Yeah. People, people are like turning do, it off. We will do like, all of the. We will do every single one of the uh, non vote, <laughs> like the vocal pod racers that are non-verbal. Yes. Yes. Like, like we don't get actual words in uh, 18th but, century anyway. rhetoric. Yes, we're gonna have to be doing it. Normal well, of but... We've watched this shit too oh, much. Anyway, no. that's gotta hurt. That's the show. That's the show. That's the Listen, show. we love you. Oh, don't get me so. Listen, I'm gonna go crazy Bone over feed. Fode and motherfucking Deed. <laughs> anyway, love me oh. some Greg Proops. Love me some Greg Proops. Um, anyway, guys, let's do our plugs. Let's do our plugs. I forgot we have. Let's to do our plugs. Let's say, hey, you can find me at the yep. Cannon Junkie on Twitter on pretty much every social media. Uh, yeah, OnlyFans coming soon. Scotty, you can find at him. Scott Jero. Yes. Yes. And you can find our show. Not up there at Bombad Cast right here, yep. right above the VHS label above my head. If you're watching at Bombad mm -hmm. Cast for those of you listening, because mm -hmm. we love you listeners so dearly. Um, and yeah, yeah, listen to Ionized Bastards. Another episode's coming pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, nice. So uh, get ready for that. And uh, besides that, I think that's everything, Scotty. Is you know what, what? should I do? You know what? Since since I'm kind of doing this, you know what? What? I want you. I want to oh, I don't do it often. You. Listen, Scotty, what should the wonderful people out there do? Uh -huh. 
They should stay bomber.